Hello and a warm welcome to this Witcher Vale Benefice service and a happy Mothering Sunday, Sunday to those of you who are fellow mothers uh, and also those of you who care for others in our community. My name is Kassa, I'm one of the ministers in the team and on this fourth Sunday of Lent, uh, traditionally called Mothering Sunday, uh, people would return to their mother churches, maybe a cathedral or a local parish church where they had been baptised. Um, and it became over time uh, an opportunity for uh, children to give gifts to their mothers in appreciation for all that they did. Um, and today we're going to be thinking about how it, we can be in danger of undervaluing uh, the work or roles of everyday things, seemingly small everyday things. And we're going to look at the image of a body uh, with its many parts, thinking about valuing everyone's part in the work of the whole overall work of the body. Let's begin by praying. God of life, we rejoice with thanks for all those who have mothered us in our lives. In a world that is broken and in need of your motherly love, please use us to aid others as you do this in providing comfort, nurture, protection and support. We ask that you grow us as carers to those in need so that we might celebrate your goodness together, even through our own brokenness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we sing our first hymn today, When I Needed a Neighbour, Were You There? When I needed a neighbour, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a neighbour, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name won't matter, were you there? I was hungry and thirsty, were you there, were you there? I was hungry and thirsty, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name won't matter, were you there? I was cold, I was naked, were you there, were you there? I was cold, I was naked, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name won't matter, were you there? When I needed a shelter, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a shelter, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the name won't matter, were you there? When I needed a healer, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a healer, were you there? And the creed and the colour and the So our reading from the Bible today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This is a letter uh, that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. And this part of the letter is called Unity and Diversity in the Body. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Jesus Christ. For we were all baptised by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. And so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. 
it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an I, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If we were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Charles Plum was a jet fighter in uh, a jet fighter pilot in Vietnam. After 75 combat missions, his plane was destroyed by a surface-to-air missile, um, and Plum ejected and parachuted into enemy hands. He was captured and set, set, spent six years in a communist prison. He survived the ordeal and he now lectures about lessons learned from that experience. He tells us this story. One day, when Plum and his wife were sitting in a restaurant, a man at another table came up and said, you're Plum, you flew jet fighters in Vietnam from the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk. You were shot down. How in the world would you know that? asked Plum. I packed your parachute, the man replied. Plum gasped in surprise and gratitude. The man shook his hand and said, I guess it worked. Plum assured him, it sure did. If your shoot hadn't worked, I wouldn't be here today. Plum couldn't sleep that night thinking about the man. He says, I kept wondering what he might have looked like in a navy uniform, uh, a hat, a bib, uh, and maybe bell-bottom trousers. I wondered how many times I might have passed him on the Kitty Hawk. I wondered how many times I might have seen him and not even said, good morning, how are you? Or anything else, because you see, I was a fighter pilot and he was just a sailor. Plum thought of the many hours the sailor had spent on a long wooden table in the bowels of the ship, carefully weaving the shrouds and folding the silks of each parachute, holding in his hands each time the fate of someone he didn't know. Now Plum asks his audience, who's packing your parachute? Everyone has someone who provides what they need to make it through that day. Charlie Plum's experience reminds us that every community needs every person playing their part if it's going to function successfully. Some of those parts will be the glamorous roles, like the fighter pilot. Others will be the behind the scenes, out of the way, and apparently unimportant jobs like parachute packing. But all are vital. So on this Mothering Sunday, I wonder who are the people caring for your needs? Who are the people in our community who provide vital services but are often not thought about or indeed valued. Remember during the pandemic when we suddenly realised how important supermarket workers were, delivery drivers and cleaners. Paul's image in his letter to the Corinthians was very helpful because it applies to all sorts of groups of people, particularly families, church families and communities. The church at Corinth, a large city, second only to Rome, was incredibly diverse. It contained people from different cultural backgrounds, living in a city where anything goes. Uh, we might think of Las Vegas as a modern day example. So it was really important for Paul to be able to use an image that acknowledged the church's community's diversity and encouraged its unity. Paul's question was, how can diverse people work together in one body? He answers it by uh, pointing out in chapter 13, the next chapter on, which you'll probably have heard at weddings, uh, to the overarching importance of love. 
Many have gifts of ministry, pastoral care. We may be gifted musicians, teachers, welcomers, cleaners, but none of these gifts are of any use unless we work together as one body in love. This was the particular problem of the church in Corinth. Those with uh, special gifts were trying to say that their gifts were more important than other people's gifts. And we're back to who's packing your parachute. So in this body of many parts, each part is valuable because without it, the body cannot function at its best. So those more humble parts of the body should, like the parachute packer, take encouragement from this image that without their seemingly small role, the whole body would cease to function. Those in more uh, glamorous positions should uh, accept and be humble about what they are called to do, knowing that they only form one part of the whole body. We have to do this uh, what we have to do is to be part of the body that God calls us to be and that will be within the limits of our time, our skills, our gifts, our energy and our current resources. But we are called to be supportive of the whole body and its different parts that represents us uh, and that might be through prayer, that might be uh, through a word of thanks, uh, it might be encouragement or appreciation in many different ways um, and that it also might be uh, contributing to resourcing the parts that represent us. Paul points to the head of the body being Jesus from whom each of us takes our direction and inspiration so that we are given grace to be uh, Jesus's body in our community <clears throat> and to build his kingdom, one small act of love after another. Let's pray. Loving God, we begin with saying sorry for the times we've failed to notice those who care for us in seemingly small ways, when we thought of ourselves as more important than others, when we have not played our part in working in unity with others. Please forgive us and heal us. On this Mothering Sunday, we give thanks for all who have loved us, inspired us, educated us and provided for our needs. May you encourage everyone who carries out caring roles in our lives and communities. We give thanks for the church, the body of Christ and for those who brought us to birth in the family of Jesus. Through the waters of baptism, we pray that all people will hear again God's call to care for those in need and bring them God's love. We pray for all those in authority in our nation and in our world. May, learn, may they learn from the example of Jesus Christ that true power is the power to feed the poor and the hungry, to make a home for the homeless and to offer hospitality to the brokenhearted. We pray for the people of Ukraine, Afghanistan, Myanmar and Yemen. We give thanks for the generosity and compassion of so many sending much needed resources. Help us to know how to continue to respond to the needs of our neighbours, local and across the world. Lord, we pray for all who suffer today in mind, body or spirit. In particular, we pray for those who have lost a motherly presence and those mothers who have lost children. May they find consolation in God, the one in whom every family on earth finds its home. We give thanks for those who have gone before us into the many mansions of the Father's house. May we learn from them to trust God's care and provision for us all the days of our life and into our death. We pray these prayers in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's pray for God's blessing on us. Uh, I uh,
pray for a, a lovely day for you and your families. I hope it's really joyful and uh, full of a, a really good time. Let's pray for God's blessing. May the Lord who brought us to birth strengthen us for daily life. May the Lord who provides for all of our needs sustain us day by day. May the Lord whose steadfast love is for all send us out to live and work for others and the blessing of God of love be upon you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen. We finish with the beautiful hymn, Lord of all hopefulness. God bless you. Mm -hmm.